You guys know what the best time to study for ESMA is, right? It's after the first one. That's right. But seriously, the first ESMA contest was yesterday, and I'm sorry I didn't make this earlier, but today we're going to talk about error propagation. I mean, late is better than never, am I right? Hello everybody, I'm Carr, and today I'm going to give you guys a short crash course in error propagation. It's a really small thing in ESMA, but like, if you understand the very basics, it's like super easy to understand, and if you know it, you get three points on ESMA. Who can say no to three points on ESMA? Come on. Alright, so basically the three things you have to know for error propagation are the sum rule, the product rule, and the power rule. And it's literally basically just calc, but like, I'm gonna make it a lot more simple for you guys so you don't have to know calc. I'll show you guys the calc proofs after, so it's easier to remember, but let's start with the actual boring algebra easy part. So let's first understand what uncertainty means. Basically it means like, if you have a ruler, right? That's a ruler, okay? It's like super straight, perfect, wooden ruler, whatever, right? And you know that there's like millimeter marks, right? So let's say you're measuring this little arrow over here, right? You would say that it's like 1.29, you, but you estimated the last digit. So basically what that means is that your error is going to be plus or minus 0.01 me centimeters. That's, uh, I, know, I, know my, I know my SI prefix is okay, I swear. So yeah, your uncertainty is going to be plus or minus 0.01. Okay, that's pretty easy, right? But what happens if you make two measurements and you want to add them together? Like what happens if like, your thing was longer than a ruler and you had to add two measurements together, then what's the uncertainty? Well that's what the EFMA often asks. So we gotta learn how to do it properly. Or maybe you're trying to find velocity is equal to length over time, right? And for your length you might have a certain uncertainty and for your time you might have another uncertainty. So how do you calculate what your uncertainty for velocity is if you measure length and time independently? That is the question. So alright. Now that we know what uncertainty is, and basically it's represented by the sigma over here, and you can put a subscript v or subscript l or subscript t or whatever you want, we're going to figure out how to calculate that real good. So first rule, sum. What do you do if you have to add two distinct measurements with distinct uncertainty? So let's say you have a is equal to b plus c, because this is a quite a well-known kinematics equation that you guys should know for your f of b, okay? You gotta know that a is equal to b plus c. That's right. So, oftentimes F is gonna be like B is measured with an uncertainty of, let's say, sigma B is equal to like 0.01 meters. And then sigma C, let's say, is like 0.05 or something. So basically the sum rule is just gonna say that sigma A is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the other two. Sigma squared B plus sigma squared C. Alrighty, epic. So if we literally just plug into our formula, we get that A has an uncertainty of I don't know, I didn't put it in my calculator yet. I'm sorry, let me do that real quick. We get that the uncertainty of A is 0.051. Epic. So whenever you think about uncertainties, always think Pythagorean theorem, even though it has nothing to do with geometry. But yeah, think Pythagorean theorem. Alrighty, product. And as you might expect, just like the sum, it means what it says it means. We're gonna figure out how to do the product. So if we have A is equal to B times C, another very important kinematic equation, basically the law says that sigma A over uh, just A, which is basically called the relative uncertainty because you're doing the uncertainty over the total, relative, hence, is equal to the square root of sigma b over b squared plus sigma c over c squared. I'm sorry that my sigma look like sixes, but like, sigma is so hard to draw not as a six. I just don't get how people do it. And basically this product rule also applies to quotients as well. Oh, I didn't plan this out, did I? Okay, whatever. It works. So basically what you gotta remember is whenever you're doing sum, you use actual uncertainties, and when you use product or quotient, you use relative uncertainty. So let's use our other example of v is equal to l over t. Then if our l has this uncertainty of like 0.01, as we're going to use the same example, and the actual length is going to be like, let's say 1 meter, and then we have the sigma t, let's say, is equal to 0.05. However, it takes 5 seconds to go the length. Then basically, our relative uncertainty for l is going to be sigma l over l, which is just going to be 0.01. And then our uncertainty for t, our relative uncertainty, is going to be 0.05 over 5, which is also 0.01. So we basically get that the relative uncertainty of, not a, this is v, what am I doing? We get that the relative uncertainty of v is equal to what? What's root 2 times 0.01? I don't know how to do that in my head. Wait, I'm bad, dude. <laughs> root 2 is a 0. Point, wait, no, what? No, root 2 is 1.414. What am I doing? So basically, it's going to be 0 0.0141. But that is the relative uncertainty, okay? So if we wanted to find the actual uncertainty of velocity, we've had to multiply by v. And we know that the desired velocity is supposed to be length over time, which is actual length, which is 1, over the actual time, which is 5. So the actual v is supposed to be 0 0.2 meters per second. 
So if we want to get the actual value of sigma v, we basically do sigma v is equal to 0 0.0141 times 0 0.2 is equal to what? 0 0.00283, very nice. And we finally found our error propagation for v. Epic. And last but not least, or perhaps least, I don't know, is the power rule. I don't know why I wasted all that space with a smiley face, but we're gonna explain it through the smiley face, it's fine. So basically what the power rule says is that if you have x to the n power, your uh, uncertainty is just gonna be n times the sigma x. So that one's relatively easy, you don't really you know, know much, so if like the uncertainty of x is like 0 0.01, then the uncertainty of x to the 5 is gonna be 0 0.05. Pretty self-explanatory. So I guess it is the least, in fact. So now you have your three rules. You first got your sum, and then you got your product, and you finally have your... Dude, I almost forgot the name. Power, that's right. And now there's one more thing you gotta think about, constants. So you can only apply these error propagating things to random variables, which is basically a measurement. But if you have an exact number, and you're adding a constant, or multiplying by a constant, or powering by a constant, it's different than if you're like doing it to a variable. So let's say that you're trying to find the uncertainty of x plus 5. To derive this uncertainty, we can just think about the uncertainty of the constant as being 0. So in essence, what we're saying is that our sigma of x plus 5 is just equal to the square root of sigma x squared plus 0 squared, which is just equal to sigma x. So basically, adding a constant to something doesn't change your uncertainty. Pretty cool. However, product got something epic up its sleeve. Cause let's say we had like 5x. I'm really onto the five today, I don't know why. So your uncertainty, your sigma of 5x over 5x is gonna be equal to root of sigma x over x squared plus zero squared. So basically what this is saying, if we cancel everything out and we just like solve it, we basically get a sigma 5x is equal to five sigma x. So multiplying by a constant just multiply the standard deviation by that constant. If we do five divided by x, we basically get the same thing. We basically get that this is five sigma x. And then product was just based on constant, so we don't need to do anything else interesting for that. But there is one more thing you gotta consider. What happens if you do multiple measurements and then add them together? So basically, if you add a bunch of separate variables, so we're trying to find sigma x plus y plus z, and these are all different measurements, right? So the sum of it is going to be sigma x squared plus sigma y squared plus sigma z squared. However, if they're done with the same instrument, we're making three measurements of the same thing with the same instrument, or no, no, we're making three separate measurements with the same instrument, then this is all going to be equal. So that's just the same thing as root three times sigma x. And basically the general formula is if you're using n measurements with the same instrument, you're going to have root n times sigma x. But why do we want to take the average of measurements, right? Then we take our root n of uh, sigma x and then the sum of everything, and then we divide by n. Because we know that if we multiply by a constant or divide by a constant, we just do the same thing to a standard deviation. So basically, if you're taking the average of n measurements, that's just gives you a standard deviation of root uh, sigma x over root n. And that makes sense, right? If you make more measurements, you're gonna decrease your variability because if you average them over time, you're eventually gonna like get your actual measurement. And then you could just derive all the other important stuff through the sum rule, power rule, and product rule. That's all you gotta know. Now, just a quick way to remember all these things. So basically, once you remember the sum rule, the other ones are pretty easy to derive from that. So, like, let's say you have x, y, right? And you wanna find the, like, error of that. Basically, you just take the derivative of this. So now you have d of x, y is equal to x, d, y plus y, d, x, if you use product rule. So basically we're just going to get into some calc now, so if you're not into calc, just you can stop watching here, but this is like a cool way to remember it if you know calc. So basically you divide by xy on both sides, you get dxy over xy is equal to dy over y plus dx over x. And basically the way to do this using the uh, sum rule is you just do Pythagorean theorem on this. And basically that just gives you that the relative uncertainty of the left side squared is equal to the relative uncertainty of dy over y squared plus dx over x squared. And then basically for the power rule you have x to the n, right? And you take the d of that. And then that will give you n x to the n minus 1 times dx. So if you divide both sides by x to the n, you basically get d of x to the n over x to the n is equal to uh, n dx over x. So basically, you multiply your relative uncertainty by n to get your final uncertainty. Very epic. So basically, that's all you gotta know for error propagation. Let's just do a quick epic example, and then we'll be done. So let's say that we have v0 squared minus vf squared is equal to 2ad. 
Now, this is actually an important kinematic equation, okay? I know I was joking, or was I joking? A plus B, A equals B plus C is a pretty good kinematic equation, but this one is better. So, let's say that we want to solve for D. D is equal to V0 squared minus VF squared over um, 2A. So, let's say V0 is measured with an uncertainty of 0 0.01 meters per second. And so is VF. And then the actual value of V0 is going to be 4. And then the actual value of VF is going to be 2 meters. And then for acceleration, we're going to do the uncertainty is 0 0.02. And then the actual is uh, 2. Okay, so now how do we do this using all our rules? So we can first break this up into bigger random variables. So we could say that V0 squared is one random variable, VF squared is another random variable, and then 2A is another random variable. So basically V0 squared is going to have an uncertainty of 0.02, VF squared is going to have another uncertainty of 0.02. So basically the way we approach this is we do everything in terms of relative uncertainty first and then we'll fix it to actual uncertainty. So we know that V0 squared has a relative uncertainty of twice its current relative uncertainty which is 0.01 over 4 and then same for VF, and then 2A is just going to have twice the standard deviation. Alright, and now we have a subtraction. So basically that's just the same as a normal addition rule. Well, so we know that the sigma V0 squared over V0 squared is going to be equal to 0.01 over 4 times 2. Right, because we basically have the relative uncertainty times 2 is equal to the actual uncertainty, or the relative uncertainty of the square. And then this is just going to be 0 0.005. And then we can do the same thing for VF, and we basically get that sigma VF squared, or VF squared, is just going to be equal to 0 0.01. So we want the actual uncertainty, we just multiply by V0 squared, and we get sigma V0 squared is just going to be equal to, you multiply by 16, 0 0.08. Then sigma VF squared is just going to be 0 0.04. So when we do subtraction, we just use the sum rule, and then this comes out to 0 0.0894, and then we had to divide by 2a, and we can do that using relative uncertainty. So if we find the relative uncertainty of the numerator, we just divide by what the numerator is supposed to be, which is going to be uh, 16 minus 4, which is 12, and that's the relative uncertainty for the numerator. So our denominator is just going to have a relative uncertainty of sigma a times 2, because we multiply by constant, and then divided by its actual value, 2. So we have root 0 0.0894 over 12 squared plus 0 0.02 squared. And then that gives us our final relative uncertainty at 0 0.0213. If we wanted our actual, we would just multiply by the actual value of D, which we're not going to do. But yeah, you get the idea. Alrighty, I hope that was useful. Error propagation is one of those things that doesn't show up that much, but it's guaranteed to show up. And if you know it, you're just going to get free points, and it really doesn't take that long to learn. Hope this was helpful. Thanks guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know if you want more of these crash courses. Alrighty. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.